being an artist, I could be anywhere in the world to create and to showcase my work. But the most important thing for me was to give back. And coming home, my concentration more was on the children who haven't had the opportunity to, um, to be guided. So I thought, you know, it was an opportunity for me to, to come in and, and start something and help and give back, you know, basically that's what I, what I call legacy. I am Yao Fusu Safori. I am a painter, um, a designer, and a sculptor. I'm from a Kroponga Kwapim. My parents, um, my mom, who is Caroline, and Owariwa Bohini, and that's my, my father is um, Rasmus Benjamin Safori. Um, my dad, was a farmer, an educated farmer, somebody who used to paint when he was in Achimota College. His story is a bit different, but he should have been, you know, a painter and an artist. Unfortunately, um, there was, you know, a program in, in the UK. He was supposed to have been part of it. Um, his mate had the opportunity to go as they mentioned um, there is this one man whose name is um, Kofi Antobam he was uh, he had the opportunity to go then to England to study art my dad was supposed to but unfortunately his parents didn't have the you know the means you know I right hear it was just five pence then you know the parents couldn't afford you know, just to complete the scholarship. So, you know, um, he couldn't make it. But his instructors, teachers mentioned to him that, um, you know, um, there was gonna be another opportunity for him to travel. So he worked and saved up some money for the following year. Unfortunately, when the scholarship came in, it wasn't the art program anymore. It was rather a Greek. But since he had saved up, and expecting that opportunity, he decided he wanted, he wanted to go. So right there and then he had dropped the art and wanted to pursue agriculture. He went to um, England, Oxford University, I, I heard, um, studied Greek and came back to Ghana to set up his business. Um, those were the first educated farmers. My dad was a very hardworking person as I have known and set up his own business, livestock vegetation, which is now still around. My older brothers are the ones who are taking care of it. I was taken to Demonstration Primary School, which is the Presbyterian Training College. It's called PTC Demonstration Primary School. Um, started off at the age of four, the primary school, and then ended up in a Kropon Boys board in Salem. I was there for two years and I sat my common entrance and, and went to um, Okapimang Secondary School. I was in Okapimang Secondary School for four years um, and then left to go to Accra Academy. And I did my O-levels and my A-levels at Accra Academy. Did a year in National Service at Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Applied to go to the United States to attend Howard University. So I left, after my national service, I left to go to the US and I was there for 21 years. It was in the US that I started painting as a hobby. I was given an opportunity to showcase my work in the store, the pieces were sold. So I decided um, I was gonna do this as a profession, my career. And that is what I've been doing for the past 25 years now. Okay, so basically when I was in school, high school, throughout, I was very active in sports. I was the school, um, I did triple jump, high jump, pole vault, discus hurdles. But the pole vault was what, what I was very prominent in. I was a national pole vault champion for Ghana for years. 
until I left. Um, when I went to Howard, I dropped out of college and started working for a company called Nordstrom, which is a departmental store, you know, um, clothing, all kinds of stuff concerning the fashion. So I was in the Washington DC area, left to go to New York. I was in New York with the same company, Nordstrom. I did Tyson's Corner, sorry, um, Pentagon City, Tyson's Corner in New York, which is White Plains. And they left there to go to um, San Francisco Bay Area, precisely um, Stanford University, Nordstrom. And uh, I started painting as a hobby because one of my friends, you know, one time mentioned that we should go to their home to, to listen to some jazz music. I love jazz a lot, yeah. So, went into their homes and saw some paintings on the walls and I kept on asking where the parents acquired the pieces from. They mentioned um, places like New Mexico, you know, um, Canada, other places. And, and, you know, the friend whose name is um, Dennis, he said, we're other friends, actually, we have about five of us. And then Dennis mentioned that um, the parents bought the pieces from um, all those places and mentioned one piece that cost $45,000. And for some reason, I mean, I just mentioned that I could paint the piece. Yes, I did um, O levels and A levels with art, but not like typically um, doing the, the formal education in art. Because when I was a national athlete, I couldn't even do much as far as my academic work is concerned. But, but then, you know, I knew that I could, I knew I loved art, you know, I could do a little bit about it. When I saw the pieces and I, I tried to prove myself to them that I could paint a piece, so the next day I went to an art store. Actually, it was a drug store that sold, um, you know, kids art materials. You know, the name of the art store is called Drug Emporium on the west coast of the US. You know, I bought the kids brushes and, you know, watercolor and some papers and went home and started painting. You know, my roommate um, were teasing me somehow, thinking that, you know, I was just joking. And anytime they kept on teasing me, I felt like I had to do more. So I painted a whole lot. And one day I had a piece with me that I put in my trunk, thinking that I was going to continue during my lunch break. My buyer, his name is Daryl, he came into the lunch lunchroom and to get a kind of Coke from the vendor's machine. And then he saw me painting and he was asking about the piece. And I told him a little bit about it. And he went straight to the store manager's office and mentioned it to her. Her name was Dodie Carmen. Mentioned it to her that I was um, I was painting. So I said, oh, okay. I mean, they, she called me up. I went to the office and she said she wanted to see more of my works. So I brought a couple of pieces to her to see. And then she decided that she was going to let me showcase my work in the store. She organized everything for me, asked me to pick a, a date, pick a date. And I did um, Labor Day weekend. She set the place up for me, you know, asking the, the display department to provide the easels I needed and everything. I was put in the collector's department and I started showcasing the works. It was on a, on a Saturday. Um, I was so excited. Some of my friends actually came to help me out. You know, we we're having fun. I didn't sell anything. The next day, um, actually that evening, um, I told Dodi about the event and she said to me, it's important, you know, you need to take another day off and then, you know, showcase the work again. So I did. Again, I didn't sell anything. But then after that, you know, I started getting phone calls from some of the people who were at the event saying that they wanted to see some of my works. So I invited them to my apartment and they, they started buying the works. Within two weeks, all the 15 pieces were gone. So I, now it was up to me to decide, you know, whether to work for, to keep working for Nordstrom or start working for Safari myself. And I thought, you know, the land of opportunity, everybody comes into America to look for that. And I thought it was my time and I grabbed on it and ran with it. And it's been um, 25 years now having my own galleries and studios, having shows almost everywhere. So um, I'm glad that the Lord gave me that opportunity and 
it's kept me in the industry all this while till now. Basically, what I see is what I paint. What I, how I feel is what I paint. Um, yes, but there are times I'll be having, you know, dreams and having some kind of um, visions on some stuff, and then I'll sketch them up and and paint them. Um, I've always loved jazz music. I've loved art, you know, in my own little way. You know, um, I love sports. You know, I love family. So I have I have done quite a number of stuff. You know, since I was growing up, and so I've made sure that I, you know um, the little that I have around me is what I try to create. And as I mentioned, I started off with jazz. You know, so if you look at my works, basically you see a lot of um, musical themes and um, you know a whole lot concerning what I believe in. I believe in fashion, and I really love fashion actually. What really inspired my decision to locate to Ghana? was the fact that I basically didn't study formally and I keep saying that then, you know, and this is what, one of the things that has really helped me out, you know, doing what I'm doing right now because I feel like, you know, somebody like me, you know, within the very short period of time, as I mentioned, when I started painting, when I started um, doing my work, I had some people who came into my life, you know, that I met that, gave me the opportunity to sh just um, to express myself, to create. A, a gentleman called Dewey and his wife called um, Ginger. Um, when I, you know, put, my, put in my resignation at Nordstrom, I strongly believe that, um, you know, it, it was time for me to at least go in for an art class, you know. So I, I did that and my first day in class there, there was an instructor in you know, in the school, his name is uh, Dimitri. He said to me, as he was going around to see everyone's work on their desks, I, I, he got to my desk and he picked up my small portfolio, looked into it, and he said, um, Sephori, um, you, um, I need to talk to you. So I said, you know, what is it about? He took me to his office and I said, I'm going to be very frank with you. I cannot teach you how to paint. What I want you to do is go home and paint and do not allow anyone else to teach you how to paint. So I asked him the reason why he said, because he, feel, if he felt that um, I may ruin my individuality. And I thought it was a good idea, I, I don't, although I didn't know much. But what happened that very instant is when I was leaving the classroom, I packed up, you know, he asked me to go in for my tuition and my registration from that administration and just, you know, go home. So when I was leaving, there was a lady, this ginger lady that I mentioned, she followed me up and she said, hey, you know, I need to talk to you. And I said, hey, what's happening? He said, she said, um, she asked me if I had a studio. And I said, no, I work from home. You know, my my roommate's table, I mean, I mean the dining table is where I was working from. She said to me, um, do you mind introducing you to my husband? And I said, yeah, why not? So around five o'clock, 5.30 in the evening, she came for me and took me home. And then the husband was more of like, Ginger told me about you. Um, we have this home and we want to, you to come and um, use our garage, three car garage as a studio, if you don't mind. And I said, wow, this is, this is great. And I mean, I loved it, you know? So I went in the next day, they said they had changed up their minds. They wanted me to use the first floor rather, you know? So I used the first floor. Um, you know, they took me to downtown San Francisco, bought me materials, all everything that I needed, um, easels, paints, brushes, and almost everything, and, and set the place up for me. So I thought it were, they were God sent. You know, I thought it was something that had been planned ahead of this, you know, because, I mean, you don't know anybody and who's going to help you and they were there and they helped me for about nine months and i started creating some beautiful pieces that i was even surprised that it was me that i was creating all those pieces so after my time in achieving some of the things that i achieved the initial stages or the first let me put it this way about probably the first 10 years everything was moving so fast i mean i had 
I was creating larger canvases. I was, you know, I had the opportunity to go into different exhibitions. I did the biggest art expo. You know, there were 400 exhibitors from 25 different countries. Um, my work was chosen to be to, to begin the event in 2011. Um, I thought I was moving really quick and I was very grateful. And I thought, you know what? I had started doing quite a number of stuff, especially the charity events. Being in the United States for 21 years, I thought it was time for me to come home. I realized that there was a whole lot. And more so when all this while, you know, from San Francisco, I came back to Washington, D.C. I maintained my own gallery and studios, you know, did in New York as well. So I felt being an artist, I could be anywhere in the world to create and to showcase my work. But the most important thing for me was to give back. And coming home, my concentration more was on the children who haven't had the opportunity to, um, to be guided. When I was growing up, a lot of parents would rather like to, I mean, the awards to go to um, university to become lawyers and the doctors and the engineers. And to me, I think everybody is an artist. If you leave kids, you know, children, you know, I think the very first thing that they do is they create. You leave them, um, but then we should be parents who are guiding them, not parents who are telling them what to do. Because a lot of parents wouldn't even want their kids to go and pursue art in various colleges and stuff. So I thought, you know, it was an opportunity for me to, to come in and, and start something and help and give back, you know, basically that's what I, what I call legacy. If you talk about appreciation of art, you know, people love art, people appreciate art, but then there is the other side of it that for you to have the means to acquire art. If you come to my home and you don't see any artwork, doesn't mean I don't pre appreciate art. Now, we have quite a number of um, um, people who have traveled, you not know, gone to school outside and they are back home right now, so they understand it better. So it's better than when um, I was here, you know, in the, here in, in Ghana, where you don't even find art galleries. You don't find a lot of artists, you know, um, painting. You don't find a lot of students coming out of School of Fine Arts from Tech or, um, you know, Ganata or wherever. But now, you know, um, the, the opportunity is there. When you see people doing it, basically you also want to do it. You also want to, to be part of it. So the appreciation is here. The means of collecting is another thing, you know, and the understanding of it with regards to it's the investment side of it is also another thing. It's good. I mean, I've been here, I've maintained my own gallery and a studio just like the way I used to do in the United States. And it's been almost 11 years that I've been home. I mean, before I had this studio and a gallery, I spent some time with my family back home in Akropon for about a year and a half before moving into the city. But I was working so hard and there were quite a number of people who used to come to my home in Akropon to, to collect my work. You know, there were a quite, quite a number of um, times that I had to participate in some activities that my, my works were shown. It, to me, it has been good. But then now we're talking about other artists. You know, they, most of the people have their studios at home where they paint. You know, maybe, I don't know how small it is or how big it is, but, but if, if you are there, I mean, probably I have a bit of an advantage because I have this beautiful space sitting on this beautiful road, you know, where a lot of people use. So people can see my work and I do more stuff. I do, you know, some of my charity events, you know, so it has really helped me. You know, um, there is a space in the Marriott Hotel that the owners wanted to showcase the works of, you know, about eight, six, different artist works and unfortunately enough I was called to be part of it so my works are there and people are seeing my works from there as well. The appreciation of it is not as much as we all and especially someone like me will be expecting but I think um, 
Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you it's good. And so long as we all are doing our best to promote art in Ghana, I'm sure um, there will come a time where everybody will benefit. Not just some of us who have the galleries alone, but for others as well. And one of the main thing I'm also doing is to help up and coming artists, you know, just to, to see that they were their works get out there. Um, I have a lot of um, workshops and, you know, I invite them over for us to talk more about how they could get their works out there. So I'm doing everything possible to change the face of the, the industry here in Ghana. My parents didn't make the choice for me of pursuing architecture. You know, I, I made the, the choice, you know, I mean, I've always loved architecture and I thought I could put myself into it and see what I could do. Unfortunately, I couldn't, um, I dropped out of um, school. So that's one thing. But I know my mother, especially, as much as they weren't around when I started painting, you know, they, they saw me and some of the things that I did, you know, when I was a national athlete, I remember they were always um, very pleased to hear about me in the newspapers and, and hearing that I had gone to win a laurel from somewhere. So um, I know they would have been very happy. Uh, my older sisters um, and my older brothers, you know, I know they are very proud that I'm doing this because um, this is a platform where you can, you know, you can bring the family name out, you know, and I think um, doing a very good work, me seeing myself to be working as hard as I am, I strongly believe that uh, not even what we've already seen, but, you know, um, what will be achieved in the future, you know, not for my parents alone, if they were around, but also for my entire family, you know, including the, the new generations. Now people are getting to know what it is in the system with regards to art. And I know people are collecting art, especially the young professionals. You know, most of these guys or people go out there to educate themselves and come back. So they are well equipped with the knowledge of art. Right now we have some leaders, you know, and I'll mention a name like Elana Chui, who is making all of us proud and giving us that kind of um, hope. He's opened some kind of door for a lot of the artists. And, and so it's a good thing. The whole wild world is now paying attention to, to Ghanaian artists, you know, and they will keep on paying attention to African artists per se, you know, and I strongly believe that anybody who works very hard, anybody who puts themselves out there thinking that, you know, they have something to give, you know, um, it would come off for them to benefit and the market will grow. I strongly believe that with the help of the collectors as well, you know, um, they should look into how to, um, to support artists, you know, because a lot of times like, for instance, when I was in the United States, I get my clients will come in and I tell them a price of a piece. And, you know, if they can afford, they will tell you they will, uh, you know, they will, they will buy the piece. If they cannot, they will let you know. Here, one thing I've realized that, um, you know, um, people are always haggling, you know, and to the point where <laughs> they can tell you that, oh, I'm going to give you this. And if you don't want to take it, then there's no deal. And I've had it from a lot of people. To me, in the industry, we have to support artists, you know, because they put a lot of time and effort as well as money into their work and we need the money to, to keep us going. So um, I strongly believe that if all of us being all artists are uh, pushing harder, a bit harder, you know, we'll all get to the point where um, the market will grow and will benefit all of us. You know, when I started off, I used to put in about 124, 25 hours in a week, you know, creating art and I am able to create close to 300 originals in a year, which is unheard of, you know. Basically, um, meaning I don't have that kind of specific um, style or come in and say, okay, this is what I am supposed to be doing. If I come in and what I do mostly is I sketch, 
all right? And I do a lot of sketches very early in the morning after I've done my administrative work. And then I'll do a whole lot of, um, you know, quite a number of drawings and then take a break and start painting. And I paint into the night. Sometimes I leave you around 1 a.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m., you know. So processes that I, I think, um, for instance, like if I get my pay, I have papers, you know, I, I come up by doing the drawings and I work in all the mediums. I will do, if it's graphite, which is pencil, that I want to work in, I do that. If I'm trying to do charcoal work, you know, I get the, pa the paper, you know, and start working. Or if I'm trying to do, you know, watercolor, oil, even oil on paper, yes, I prime it and, you know, prepare it properly so that I can work on it. Um, as far as the canvases are concerned, um, I have all canvases that, you know, different sizes, you know, I have the big ones where I, I buy the, the rolls of canvases and I have, you know, my friends, you know, carpenters who do the stretches for me and and then, you know, stretch the, the canvas on it and have um, the prime the, the canvases and then start working on it. But with regards to um, the work itself, depending on how I feel, you know, and exactly what I'm doing. And again, I, I do figurative work. I do abstract, I mean, all the styles, all the themes. I have done quite a lot of works, you know. Recently, somebody sent me a piece. They said they saw in this prominent person's home, right? And and the person just, you know, passed on not too long ago. And so they were in their house. And I mean, I remember this person came to the United States. He was a, a visiting professor at Harvard, you know, and a friend of, his had come to Washington DC to to buy some of my works and he said he wanted to buy one piece for this person I asked and she said the person is quite crazy and I said you know who is this person that you talk about so you know she just wants to remain the first name crazy and I said okay so took the piece to New England and and the next day she called me up and said the person that she bought the piece for wanted to bring um, wanted to come and visit me in my studio. They came in on Thursday, I mean, on Saturday, and the person walked out of his, they parked their car and came out of the car and then shouted, she, he shouted, Major Safori. <laughs> I didn't know him when I was growing up, but the truth of the matter is everybody knows who the person is. And so recently, when you know, fortunately, he's passed on, and and I'll mention the name. You know, that, that is Dr. Kosi our former finance minister. You know, may his soul rest in peace. Um, you know, the very first time he laid my, his eyes on my work. You know, he the, the expression. I mean, he showed me a whole lot, letting me know that I was doing the right thing. Um, we sat down in front of my sound system, and he loved jazz music. And he was fiddling with my system and we had, you know, I mean, a bottle of wine and we were enjoying it, we were talking and spent about almost four hours with me and bought another piece and then left for Ghana. And he said to me, look, I'm going to go to Ghana and call you. And he, he got to Ghana and called me up. He said, I'm with some of my friends here. I'm talking to them about your work. And he said, um, so for any time you come to Ghana, come and see me. It's rather unfortunate that I procrastinated. I kept on waiting and waiting and waiting, never went to his place. And then all of a sudden, boom, you know, he's gone. And so, you know, um, this person was in his home and saw some of my works on his wall and took pictures of them and sent them to me and said, um, so for I'm seeing some of our, your works here. And I said, yeah, this is what it is. It was very sad that we lost him, you know, a very, very good man. Um, but he made me feel that I was doing something good. Um, the, the encouragement and everything. And so I strongly believe that at a point in time, um, you know, we when we have people like that and who are supporting their arts, you know, it's a great thing. Um, I have come to the point where I feel, um, you know, we should all help each other when it comes to uh, the marketing side of it, when it comes to the growth of the 
the industry here in Ghana. I feel like each and every artist should be part of it. And um, when we bring in, especially the kids, when they're around us, we should teach them everything from the beginning. Now, one of the other things that I know that is not done in the universities and other places, the other institutions that they'll teach you the, the, you know, the creativity side of it, but the marketing, marketing side of it is not what they're doing. Learning from books and practicing and where I am right now, it has um, really helped. And I strongly believe that, um, especially the young and up upcoming ones, they are the ones that you can bend. You know, the other ones, the older ones, you know, is there's no, not much. But my, I have a wide range of my clientele, you know, I mean, I could be mentioning names from the U.S. all the way here. Um, I've had some people who really, really, really believe in my work and they are collecting my work, you know. So um, I personally, I am doing okay, you know. Um, and I'm sure that, you know, those who believe in my work are gonna keep, you know, collecting my work. My foundation is called The Art In You. I strongly believe that everybody's an artist. Recently, I did an event at the Kosombo. I was invited in to, to um, help motivate some workers from one of the ministries. The excitement, you know, the people who haven't painted before, who didn't know anything about art, started painting it. Everybody came up with something so beautiful, you know. And so um, my art in you, I think, again, children have a lot to give. And if you start guiding them from the beginning, if you start motivating them from the beginning, it is, is the best thing to do. So when I got, I came back to the United States, I mean, from the United States, I registered a company under the auspices of House of Safari, you know, to have the art in you. And what we do is um, we do a lot of, you know, the events for children in schools. So for instance, um, we've been invited to place like SOS College. We went in there for an event there and almost all the students in the school, you know, registered with us. And what we do is we we motivate them and we use the art in you to do everything in regards to schools. We've done some stuff at Penfield, a whole lot of different schools in the Eastern region, as well as the Ashanti region and here in Great Accra. Big pens, you know, um, brought me on board to do an event where, you know, it was a challenge for the kids to do some artworks and it went out to be really, really successful. We did the very first year, we did last year as well. If I'm able to get quite a number of children to, to know the industry and to be able to do well for themselves, I think it's, it's, it's the most um, important thing to me. My name is Yao Fusu Safori. You are watching Face to Face Africa, the premier global black voice.